Kristen Luck, welcome back here. Thank you. Uh, for our loyal watchers on the ASMR TV, I think they see you all over because you're a member of the program committee. Right. You're sharing questions. Yes. You're a member of council. You're yes. in the DMR. I'm and everywhere. And you're on Channel 3 for yes. the second time back. Yeah, yeah. There's but no escape from me. Exactly. But this case, you're here as one of the founders of the Women in Research Network. Yes. For those of us who have never heard about that, what is this network? Yeah, so Women in Research is a global nonprofit that's really focused on advancing both the contributions and the voice of women in market research. And take us back to the moment where you thought, hey, this is something we need. Why, why do we need yeah. something like this? It's, it's interesting because I started uh, the community back in 2007 and it was really just to introduce a friend of mine who had moved to Los Angeles and didn't know any other women in the LA area to introduce her to other researchers. So it started out very informally. Um, and then what I sort of realized over a period of time was that although um, women make up the majority, actually, of researchers in the industry, we're kind of woefully un underrepresented in senior management and executive positions. Because what's the division? Any stats at hand? Um, well, I know for the, um, the Hannah Michael 50, uh, female CEOs are less than 10%. Exactly. Um, yeah. And in the workforce, they're more than 50? More than 50, yeah. And I also sort of realized that as I was, you know, becoming um, more and more senior in my career, you know, at the early stages of my career, I worked almost exclusively with women. And in the now the later stages of my career, I work almost exclusively with men. So you embarked on a mission. I did. What did you do? I did. I did. Um, you know, in 2010, I, I sort of formalized the group. Um, we um, achieved our nonprofit status a few years ago, and we also started expanding globally. So not just focused on the needs of the women in the research industry in the U.S., but we're now um, in the U.K. Uh, we're in Australia. Um, we've done some events in Africa. Um, and we have an exciting announcement coming up this afternoon. Um, Here? Now? Yes. You're no. going to give me an announcement? Not now. No, no, no. Give it's, me the it's, scoop. It's coming out in breaking news. Yeah. I think it's at 4.15, um, the breaking news slot of the section. But we are um, very excited to make an, uh, uh, an announcement um, with regards to the SMR Foundation. Oh, yeah. well, we just talked about that with Phyllis. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but tell me a little bit. You mentioned events. Is that yes. what the core of this network is, or what does the network do? You know, we started out really as, um, as more of a networking organization. So how do we give women access to creating networks that, that have um, been traditionally dominated by men? So men have golf trips and, you know, outings and cocktail hours, but there wasn't really any kind of event that was solely focused on the kind of the unique needs of women. So we started out doing informal networking events. And that sort of evolved then to, hey, why don't we have some content or speakers at these events? So there's an educational component now. Um, we also run a mentoring program. So the only one-to-one -one mentoring program for women in the industry where we pair senior level women with women that are just coming up in their career. All right. Yeah. And, um, and then we also have an office hours format, which is where we... Um, uh, where uh, we have a host every month, um, and women can kind of log in and ask questions of a of a senior executive in the um, in the industry. And then in addition to that, we also host a job board on our website, and we also run an initiative called the Fifty Fifty Initiative, which is basically a speaker database of female speakers, so that we can get more women up on stage at industry events like Esmar. Wow. Okay. That's yeah. quite, that's quite a lot. It's a lot. It's, it's, it's <laughs> funny. We got comments yesterday. We did the big CEO panel over here. Yes. Obviously, all white male. Yes. Uh, and yeah. we got comments, where are the women? But yeah, yeah, we don't decide who the CEOs are. Right. right? I mean, you know, given there are a number of uh, female CEOs. Um, so we're moving in the right direction. We're, we're moving in the right direction. I mean, I think, you know, there's been a lot of attention, I think, in the last six months on diversity, particularly on stage, which is one of the reasons why our 50-50 initiative is so important. But it's a couple things. You know, women have to step into those roles. Women have to ask for speaking opportunities. Women need to submit papers. You know, I, I sat on the programming committee, or I'm sitting on the programming committee for this conference, and I can tell you that we didn't get anywhere near 50 50% of paper submissions, submissions from yeah. women. So yeah. if we want to get 50% on stage, women have to submit and speak up. Um, the good news yeah. is, though, is on the future of the industry, because yeah. have you seen the numbers in the YES competition? For those of you who don't know what it is, we'll see a few of them soon in the studio. Young SMR Society. Primarily female. Exactly, right? So <laughs> yeah. uh, th there's something coming out. Yeah, us, I think. absolutely. absolutely. Let's, let's zoom in a little bit on the one-to-one -one mentoring, because that yeah. sounds really interesting. Uh, th how, how can people... Again, we have quite a, a lot of young viewers. How can people participate in this? Where do yeah, they go? Yeah. So we launched the program in January of every year. So this is actually the perfect time to be talking
talking about our mentoring program because we're going to start accepting applications again in December. Okay. So there's an application process. You can find the application on our website, which is womeninresearch.org. Um, and we do one-to-one -one matching in Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, New York, um, Atlanta, London, and Sydney right now. And we're working on expanding that program to uh, Paris and also to South Africa. Because this is an offline pairing. It is offline. I would, I would say I could have an online mentor, yes. right? We Skype every two weeks and, and there we go. Yeah, we actually had a few women apply for the program that were in markets where we didn't actually have have a one-to-one -one program. But we've now paired them with mentors and they're doing um, online. So for instance, my mentor, um, who, who I was very excited to be matched with, is based in the UK. All and right. we just have Skype dates. Exactly. Yeah. And, and just if you want to share, but what kind of things do you discuss with your mentor? Yeah, I mean, um, the woman that I was paired with runs her own business, um, and as a female business owner myself, I, you know, I feel like I have a lot of experience about the unique challenges that women in business face, um, and so we've talked a lot about, um, you know, any specific business challenges that she has, you know, horrible mistakes that I've made around the way that she could benefit from, so it's been actually a really rewarding relationship, and I think you know, most of our mentors would say the same thing, that I think it's as rewarding for the mentors as it is for the mentees. So, exactly. yeah. And, um, well, since we are in a virtual mentoring position anyway right. at the moment, right. um, you seem to have broken the glass view. You are in the C-suite, right, as yeah. a woman. What, what tips do you have for women at the start of their career to actually get to the place where you are? Yeah, I mean, I think for me it was really about asking asking for more responsibility and for volunteering for things. Um, I probably worked a lot of hours early on in my career because I would raise my hand and say yes to everything. Um, and to really sort of follow um, what's most interesting to you. Because I think that the things that you're good at are the things that are the most interesting and the most appealing. And so I've never tried to focus on things that I, I wasn't good at or that I didn't naturally gravitate toward. I really tried to focus on what are the things that I really enjoy and that I'm really passionate about, and then how can I do more of those things? Do more, yeah. basically. That's, yeah. that's the key message here, It right? is, unfortunately. Yeah, there's no, you know, there's no there's easy no free route. Lunch. Right, <laughs> yes, exactly. All right. Exactly. Well, thanks very much for sharing these insights. Yeah. Now, the wrap-up question is, of course, where can people join? Ah, okay. You can uh, join on our website, womeninresearch.org. We're not a membership-based organization, so it's free. Yeah. Um, we like to think of it more as a community. So you can sign up to receive alerts about all of our events and programming on the website. Um, and then we also have a very active LinkedIn and Facebook community. Yeah, so I saw over 800 members, right? Um, on Facebook yeah. and on uh, LinkedIn, we've got nearly 3,000. Oh, wow. So um, it's a very, you know, it's a fast-growing network. I think we average about 15 to 20 new community members a week right now. All right. Well, this, yeah. is, this is something to take off, and I hope yeah. all uh, ladies and women and girls all over the world right. watching right. that they join you uh, at the, the Women in Research Network. Yes. Thanks for sharing, Kirsten. Thank and you. And I, I think we'll see you back soon yes. again at some point. Thanks for having all me. All right. Okay, cool.